Hey, I'm Maxime, and today I'm going to talk about the new adaptive prop volume feature, also called APV. So what is it? When lighting virtual environments, we can use several techniques to compute global illumination. But for high quality, high performance, one of the solutions is to pre-compute indirect lighting and store data in either light maps or light probes. APV is the new light prop system. It's working on both URP, HDRP, and many platforms from mobile to high-end PC. So with this session, I will show you how, how APV can help you improve the visual quality of your project and reduce your iteration time by providing powerful and automated tools. I will give you a quick glimpse on how it works and share tips and best practice when setting up your scenes. So first, let's take a look at APV advantages and why it could be a very good solution for lighting your virtual world. So as you know, setup and iteration time are very important in a production. So let's see how it works and how you can create and place your probes. So if you look on the left, you can see the light probe groups, the whole system, and you have to place probes one by one, which can take a huge amount of time to set up. And if you update your scene, you may have more work to do, and it can be quite hard to know where to place probes. APV is a volume-based system, so it's really fast. You just set up a volume, and then Unity can create pro probes for you. That's so much faster. But let's see in practice how it works and how you can set up an APV in your scene in less than a minute. So all you need to do is create a probe volume. You can scale it manually, or in this case, I am using a global volume, so it takes the entire scene. Then in the lighting window, I can set up the minimum distance between probe and generate lighting. And that's it. With the rendering debugger, you can see your probes. And if you need to update your scene, like for example, add a few buildings, that's quite easy. You don't need to change your setup. You just need to rebake, and Unity will create more probes where it's the most needed, like near the building. You may have noticed APV is adaptive. It means that the resolution is depending on the surrounding geometry. The world is automatically subdivided into multiple bricks, and this way you can have details only when you need the most detail. So if you look on the left image, image you can see multiple bricks, the purple one, the blue one, and the orange one, and you can see that the further away you go from the big building, the biggest the bricks, and the biggest the distance between probes. This is a good way to keep the number of probes under control and to save memory and reduce baking time. So the setup is automatic, but you can also get a lot of control. So you have general settings for the minimum distance between probes, and you can also choose the number of subdivision level you want. And you also have overrides per probe volume, so you can easily uh, force one subdivision level for a specific area of your scene. So you have a lot of control to, to control the probe placement. But now let's take a look at one, at one of a huge advantage of APV. APV lighting is per pixel. It's a great improvement over the old system where lighting is per object. But what does it mean? If we look at the left image, the truck is not transitioning well from darkness to light, and the door is clearly standing out. It's because each mesh is lit with a single interpolated probe. But on the right, you can see that with APV, everything is correctly lit, and actually each pixel can sample, can sample APV at any location. So you can have nice and smooth transitions. So which object can we light with light probes? Usually, with light probe groups, only dynamic objects would be probe lit. And the started part of the scene would be light mapped. But with APV and the per-pixel lighting, things may be different. 
an APV could be a very good candidate to light, to light every object in your scene. It's quite useful if you, if you don't want to deal with light map UVs, for example, or if you want to use the same solution to light every object in your scene. So on the right, I'm comparing APV with light maps. As, as you can see, the result with APV, everything is lit with APV, and it's quite good. We have no leaking, and it's quite similar to light map, even if with light map we can get more precise indirect shadows. But now let's jump to one of my favorite APV features, the possibility to create multiple lighting scenarios and switch or blend between them. So remember, here everything is pre-computed, so it should be static by definition. But if you blend between states, you can easily add dynamics to your scenes while keeping performance optimal. It can be incredibly useful for day or night cycles or simply if you want to switch a light on and off. Clips, please keep in mind that it's only light, uh, working in HDRP for the lighting scenarios and that you still have to manage the direct lighting data. It's only, the blend is only for APV data. Also, a bit of C sharp is needed for the blending. And there is another cool feature that comes with APV, that's the reflection probe normalization. So what is it? Usually we have a few reflection probes, but a lot of light probes. And maybe we can take advantage of this. The main idea is to use APV data to adjust reflection intensity. It's particularly useful in occluded areas. We can use APV data to automatically dim down the reflection so it fits more closely to the environment. So it can be quite useful if you want to limit the number of refre reflection probes. Instead of placing an additional one in occluded area, for example under the bed, you can just, just use the normalization and let Unity and APV do the job for you. But what, what about using APV for huge scenes? Is there a hard limit for the number of probes you can use? APV has been designed to work with large worlds. Your scene is automatically divided into multiple scene, cells, and only the relevant ones are loaded in the GPU. And thanks to the streaming system, you can work with a great number of probes without taking the risk of running out of GPU memory. And you can also manage your streaming budget so your project can scale efficiently on multiple devices. So just a quick summary about everything that we've seen. APV setup is quick thanks to automatic probe placement. APV looks great thanks to per pixel lighting and reflection probe normalization. APV lighting scenario is quite useful if you want to add dynamics to your scenes. And thanks to streaming, APV memory footprint is completely under control. And that's a lot of reason why I think it's a great solution for your baked global illumination. But now let's take a bit of time to look on how it can be set up efficiently and what tools are available and how you can fix the most common issues. So remember, APV grid is automatically generated, but the grid is regular and you cannot move a probe around. So a probe might end up inside geometry or might not be completely aligned with the wall so you can either get some dark stains on the wall or some light leaking uh, when light from the exterior is coming into the interior. But I'd like to show you multiple tools that we have to fix those problems. So first, let's talk about virtual offsets. It's happening before baking and it allows the user to move the capture position of a probe but we are not moving the probe itself, but only the capture position for baking. And Unity provides both automatic and manual tool to, the, uh, to set up the offset. So let's look at our scene. We have a probe that is inside the chair as it's causing dark artifacts. So what we can do is activate virtual offset, tune the surge distance, and Unity will shoot rays to find the closest way out of the colliders we can use the debug view to see the next capture position and then rebake 
and everything should be fixed. I'd like to show you another example. For example, if you don't have Collider, or if you want to do it manually, you can easily create a probe adjustment volume. You can scale it. And then you will be able to manually set the offset vector. So you can choose the direction and the size of the vector. You can refresh the preview, and once you are happy, you can reback, and it should solve your issues. So we have another tool to modify the back data. That's dilation. So this time it happens at the end of the baking process, and Unity can detect invalid probes and fit them with valid probes in their surroundings. So let's look at the scene. We have dark stains on the wall, and that's because some probes were inside geometry. And we can see with the debug view that Unity automatically detects invalid probes. And with dilation, it can automatically take data from the surrounding probes and fit the invalid probe. And that's as simple as this. You can fix many issues with those tools. So now that we've seen how to edit the captured data at bake time, I would want to show you how and to explain to you how APV is sampled. We need to understand what is happening during sampling, and we can use the rendering debugger for this. So basically, we have a tool called debug probe sampling, and you can click and select a pixel to inspect how APV is sampled, and you can get a lot of information. You can get the pixel position and normal. You can get the final sampling position. You can see the, all the contributing probes with a few information, like the sampling weight, and other information, like the validity of the probe. So now that you can debug APV sampling, let's see what tool we have to modify it. So first, we can use the volume system to apply biases on every pixel on the screen. So let's look at our scene. I can create an empty object, then add a volume component. And then I can override the probe volume options. And then if I override the, the normal bias or the view bias, with the normal, you can see that I can push the sampling position in the normal directions. And I can push the sampling position toward the camera. So this can be quite useful if you want to uh, push the sampling position away from the wall or keep it, keep it inside the room if you have interior and exteriors. So you should use this, those bias most of the time, but don't use extreme values. For example, for the view bias, it can be unstable as it relies on the camera position. And the last tool I want to show you relies on a validity concept, and it can really do magic when it comes to fix light leaking. So in addition to the lighting data, each probe stores a binary state, and when sampling APV, the system will try to exclude or at least lower the contribution of some probes. And it can be quite useful for probes that stand in between two areas, like for example, in between interior and exterior. So let's see in practice how this works. You can see that we have a lot of light leaking. So first, I'm going to use the rendering debugger to see what's happening. And we can see that the pixel is sampling exterior probes that are quite bright. So what I can do is create a probe adjustment volume. I can scale it. And then I will use the volume to manually invalidate some probes. So let's look at the debug view. And if I invalidate some probes, it should fix most of the issue in the interior. So let's look at the rounding debugger view. And you can see that those invalid probes are, are not sampled anymore. So really useful to fix light leaking. And I can do that for the rest of the room, like the right wall and the ceiling. And it should fix most of the issues. 
So even with this scene, with a resolution that is not that high, like 50 centimeters between probes, with those tools, you can completely solve light leaking and get very good results. So a quick recap. We have tools to modify the baked data, virtual offsets and dilation. And you can also modify the way APV is sampled at runtime with the normal and the view bias and the validity concept. And if you still struggle with light leaking, then you can increase a bit the wall thickness or boost the APV resolution. APV resolution has no impact on the GPU performance. It has impact on bake time, disk space, and CPU memory. So you can push it a bit, and it can be a quick solution to fix light leaking. And sometimes, if you really cannot fix light leaking, you can use light map for a few problematic objects. And remember, the rendering debugger is a great friend to understand what's happening and to know how to fix issues. And finally, I'm pleased to reveal our first step to our pre-computed dynamic global illumination in static environment. It's based on adaptive prop volume. And in this example, you can see that uh, when I move the light, the indirect lighting is dynamically updated. I can move the sun, but it will also work for every kind of light, and also with dynamic albedos. Thanks. We really care about your feedback, so please let us know what you think about adaptive prop volume. Also, don't hesitate to reach out online on the Unity forums. And I would like to thank the Unity team and the asset store creators. I used a few packages for this demo. And if you need more information, you can also take a look at the presentation that Unity did last year as, at SIGGRAPH. It's called Prop-Based Lighting, Strained air, air System, and Physically Air Shading in Unity Enemies. And my colleague Francesco gives valuable information about Prop Volume. Thank you.